You guys, a fun fact that I want to share with you. In pregnancy, a uterus grows up to a thousand times its normal size. What? No. Yeah. Is the baby inside the uterus? Yes. Yeah. Dude, how small wow. is the uterus before? Wow. before <laughs> Dude, like, yeah, wait, what? It's very small. Like Dude. this big. No, no, no. It's got to be smaller than that. Think about it. Yeah. A newborn baby. Dude, it's got to be like you can't see a uterus. I'm picturing it like coming outside no, of you and like literally going, that. wrapping, eating your whole body from the outside in. How, did, how, how, is it th- how does that make sense? Th- how does that make sense? A thousand times its size? Like Brian said, how does that not swallow the person? I need an analogy. I want to see. I told you it was like, going to blow your mind. Uh, so I had this prepped for last week, but we kind of ran out of time after going so deep into made. Um, but this is, a. so I had this originally for what the health, but what the health got, this got bumped out for this week's what the health. So there's, this is kind of like two what the health. Dude, this episode has like five what the health in one. Yeah. Uh, we might as well just title this episode. What the health? Uh, this is crazy. So have you guys heard about these glowing cats? No. Holy no. shit. Okay. Wait, what is a glowing cat? Exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> Literal glowing cats. Like a real life cat? Here's an image. This cat is glowing in the dark. That is not a light shining on the cat. That is literally a oh. cat that is reacting to a black light. And it is, is glowing. Is a thing? Yeah, dude. Yeah. No. So, okay. So, cats that can glow in the dark from a new genetic engineering technique, I don't know if it's CRISPR or not, um, are helping scientists study molecules that could stop AIDS. So, this was announced back in September. Wait, does that mean that people who have AIDS will now glow in the dark with this new potential treatment? <laughs> I don't. I, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't Their think so. Their anonymity. <laughs> their am- no. anonymity will be will be will be torn away. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's not quite that. Which is but cool because like a lot of the nightclubs that they go to are those like black light type of nightclubs. <laughs> whoa, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> well, Brian, uh, that was I mean, that was not okay. What wait, you just what said. was not okay? What do you what do you think that I said? I just mean that there's like you know like I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna go there. Nope, not even a little bit. All right, FGF. Let it, I'm not, no, 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 no. We started. It's okay, public, so, so, it's public record now. <laughs> oh no, oh, man! You're you getting can't. You're getting fucking canceled, Brian. Um, Shit. Um, but I think what you were trying to touch on there was that um, AIDS is pretty prominent in the gay community. I wasn't saying that. Yes, you were. And uh, and that black lights, uh, I can't, I guess, are prominent in gay bars, but I don't know if that's the case or not. Um, Glow in the dark stuff seems to be. Sounds a little like, stereotypical does, to me. It does it sound a little stereotypical. It, it yeah. is stereotypical. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> okay, so moving right <laughs> along. So far, the researchers have created three genetically engineered kittens that glow green and, pa- and, and pass this glowing gene onto their offspring so so they have altered these the genetics of these cats that to gl- to glow but also when these cats uh copulate they will pass that gene on uh they copulate. explain late yeah have you heard of that word i have not was that in the article or did that just come it, off that, the dome for you it just came off out of yeah. my mouth out of my mouth did it, it really yeah copulate is another word for uh producing yeah offspring children Dude, good, good for you is this have you uh, did you uncover this in like a wordle research or something that you've done been doing or <laughs> hey look look i might have minutes. a hard time reading some of these fucking big words but i i do actually have a vast vocabulary just so a, we're clear yeah, okay yep strong vocabulary I, I, I do have a strong vocabulary i just i just mm-hmm. i'm not good at reading um, <laughs> so they explain that the cats are much b- better models for aids viruses than mice or other animals and this is really interesting. The reason is, um, is because the virus responsible for human immunodeficiency virus, so HIV, and feme- uh, f- sorry, feline immunodeficiency virus, FIV, are extraordinarily similar. So a- FIV is AIDS for cats, and FIV and HIV are, are v- not 
very different from one another. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're utilizing cats for this study as opposed to mice or any other animal because they're going, this is really, really similar to what we see with AIDS. Um, FIV causes AIDS with loss of infection-fighting T cells like HIV does in people. And cats get sick virtually the same uh, AIDS-defining opportunistic... It, they get sick from the virtually the same AIDS-defining opportunistic infections as humans who have untreated HIV, said mm -hmm. researcher uh, Eric Prishola, uh, a molecular bio biologist and infectious disease specialist at the Mayo Clinic College of Medicine in Rochester. As such, researchers have long wanted to genetically experiment with cats to better understand how to combat AIDS. And to create genetically modified animals, scientists insert genes into their genomes, often using benign viruses as the delivery vehicles. And investigators commonly target the earliest possible stages at an animal's development so that the gene gets installed into all of its cells. So they mm. do this very early on in like the gestation period, I guess. You know where they got the idea for this? <clears throat> where? They were at uh, Cats the musical. No, they were at uh, Putting Edge, the glow Good in the guess. dark, glow in the dark uh, mini putt, because the guy who was uh, invented yeah. this was on hole four at the Putting Edge in Bears Lake, and there's uh -huh. a cat at the end of the thing, and he saw that, and the idea sort of hit him like a light bulb, and he was like, "If I can make the cats glow in the dark." I can solve the AIDS crisis. Jeez, Brian, were you a, a part of this? Were you a part of the study? I was. Yeah, that's why I'm so. That's why I, I'm able to joke about this, guys, because you know, like I know this inside and out. You're two for two right. today, so Brian. <laughs> right. So you're trying to give reason to why you were so uh, socially. No, 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 no. No, that has nothing to do with that from earlier on. This is a <laughs> no. yeah, totally. You'll, as as Jer reads the article, you'll find out more about how this was. Oh, right. man, just keep digging that <laughs> hole, Bri. Uh, tinkering with gene, cats' genes. So, so, so at first, scientists created genetically engineered cats using cloning, which is so fucking crazy. I still, I still, I know that we've cloned animals, but still to this day, how are we not talking about that every single day? Like that is just a. <laughs> I want to. I know. That's I want to clone. I want a Loki clone. You know, Barbara Streisand has clone cloned her ducks. Yes. You yeah. know, I, I actually don't find cloning that impressive. What? Because, like... Here we go. Like, Here's some fucking stupid story <laughs> about the gas station in Dartmouth. <laughs> that fucking, Jesus fucking Christ, Brian. No, no. Get it out, dude. No, Get it out. No, no, but here's what I, I actually... I legitimately mean this, because I am a clone of my brother, right? Like, Well... It, genetically, we are the exact same. We are, like, we have the exact same DNA, and... And this is why it's unremarkable because we are totally different. So, like, when I think of a clone, I understand that, I Brian. But, like, but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold the fucking phone. <laughs> you guys were both, you guys both slipped out of the pussy at the exact same time. No, no, we were a C-section baby. Okay, whatever. You were yeah. both pulled out of a belly at the exact same time. Yeah. Okay, uh, you are sitting here telling me that if <laughs> somehow some fucking scientist came in here and cloned you at thirty. But born brand new, and then by the time you're 60, you at 30 is 30, your clone. That that's not fucking making your mind explode yes, at the possibility it's, it's of how not, fucked that is? It's not, because it's not me. It's not what makes me me, and that's why. So when I think of cloning, when I think of cloning, I, I legitimately mean this. When I think of cloning, I think of, like, the sci-fi cloning. Like, there is two of exactly you, like, personality experiences everything guys and you have like guys the exact same person like have in the you science science fiction version with have this you type seen of cloning it's just like you're just made twins in a petri dish ha have you seen swan song <laughs> have you seen swan song no yeah. if you say that have you seen swan song if you say that enough it really does start to sound strange have you seen swan song <laughs> because no, it's why? incredible <laughs> it Okay, any anybody who's listening to this, anybody who's listening to this show should watch Swan Song because it and it really sounds like I'm talking gibberish now. It's <laughs> it's um uh is it Maha is it Mahershala? Is that how you say his first name? Mahershala yeah, Ali. Mahershala Ali, yeah. He is uh the lead in this uh movie, him and uh Naomi Wa Naomi Watts, I think it is. And um and basically the the, the premise of the movie is that he is, he has, and this is not a spoiler alert. This is all like first two minutes of the movie type stuff and like trailer stuff. 
um, he is he has cancer, he's terminal cancer and he, and he tells nobody. So nobody in his life knows. And he, and then there's a sci-fi aspect to this where he is, has the choice, uh, to get a clone of himself made. And the only way that this, that he remains, that this choice remains for him is if nobody knows that. Okay. Don't say anything else to, to, I I don't want to know anymore. Because I didn't know any of that already, and and already I'm I, don't please don't tell me anything else. We'll watch it and we'll talk about it next week. I'll watch it tonight. But the, we'll talk about but it next the week. clone, the clone version of him in this scientific, <laughs> in this scientific way is that is please, in the sense please, that please stop. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, no, I'm just. No, this is this is just this it's is just what I was talking what Brian about. Said. I don't want to know anymore. That, you're saying that it's is that it's maps. not just a genetic clone. Yes. It's also like a downloaded also a memory clone. Yeah, yeah, dude, that's yeah, what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. So when so, when so I Brian, hear clones, so Brian, yeah, Brian, that's not the reality we live in. But the reality we re- live in is almost as fucking crazy as that. Yeah, which is why I find it underwhelming because dude, we've been overpromised in science make fiction. Me fucking angry. We've been overpromised man. in movies like this <laughs> fucking movie. Damn it, you make me fucking pissed. Because of Swan Song, that dude, I don't what? fucking care about clones. You know what? This is the fucking equivalent of man. I can't. Man, so many people are listening right now. So fucking angry. Yeah, you for not and and not I am. validating and my opinion. No, no, no. Yeah, because this opinion is fucking stupid. And you know what? This Maybe is to this you. is the exact exact same thing as when someone says, man, you're not going to believe how much I paid for this couch today. How much do you think I paid for this couch? And someone goes, $750,000? And you're like, well, fuck no. Like, no, because that's just a super unreasonable, dumb fucking guess. And you just took the fun out of the thing that we're doing, dude. which was guess how much I paid for the couch that was too much money. That, that is a perfect that's, example of why I feel this way, because science fiction has been like, Guess what? Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and then I learn about the real clones, and I'm like, they're not really that impressive. Man, this is <laughs> the dumbest episode. Fuck this podcast. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> I- I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. I mean, Brian's gonna be canceled by the end of the next week anyway, so we'll have to have a new guest. Well, good thing I have a clone that's not exactly me because <laughs> yeah. he can replace me. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so, so at first, uh, coming back to the story that has uh, nothing to do with anything we've just been talking about. Um. Uh, uh, they they first started genetically engineering the cats by by cloning, um, which meant that injecting a gene into a cell um, from the skin, for instance, and then implanting the modified nucleus of that cell into an egg uh, that had the nucleus removed. And the resulting cell then develops into the embryo, much like a fertilized egg would. Now, in this manner, researchers generated felines that were either fluorescent red or green, a glow-in-the-dark cat being visible proof, uh, v- visible proof of the genetic engineering succeeding. So, the the, ca- the cats that are being born glowing green, they're going okay. There we go. Like we, uh, this okay. is the proof that we did the thing that we set out to do, which was cloning these cats. So it's not a, it's not a, it's not inherent. It's not that the that the the glow-in-the-dark feature is is like essential to. No, whatever they're doing, it they're adding li- it in. That's right. as a marker. This is literally for them to go. Okay, we are now we are now validated that what we have done has been a successful experiment. Yes. Do you, th- do right. you think that yes. they were like, what kind of cool thing could we do? How about glowing in the dark? Yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, yeah, like you know, something benign. That's so, yeah, not like, gonna, like fuck up the cat population. Yeah, exactly. Like, we're, like we don't yeah. want a, a cat born with no teeth. You know, like that would just be. Bad, Man, right? But if so it like, glowed in the dark, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this—it's it's like I don't think it's harming. I don't think it's harming the animal. You know, it's—it's yeah. it's a yeah. very uh, evident marker of like, okay, well, this yeah. is unique. You know, it's not like they, and they wanted to go, it to be—they wanted it to be cool, uh, like because they cloned it, which wasn't very fucking cool. So yeah, they had to step up the coolness factor, and they're like, well, we'll clone it, but it will glow in the dark. Do you think there was an aspect yeah. of this where they were like, oh, this will be good marketing for like when we when we advertise the fact that we I are bet, doing this research? I actually bet you there was a little bit of that discussion. I bet too. Of going, yeah. plus the cat will glow in the dark, which will be clickbaity. Because like the picture that yeah. was taken was like a pretty good professional. It's fucking, like they were like, hey, let's yeah. capture this. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah, if Scientific American it. readers are going to love this. Yeah, if you want to see the cat, you can go to uh, YouTube right now and watch the episode over on YouTube. Um, so, so however, this kind of cloning is actually um, well. This might surprise Brian, but uh, this kind of cloning is actually extraordinarily difficult. 
to perform. Um, <laughs> as it, as it essentially involves <laughs> delicate surgery on cells. <laughs> in addition, in addition, the manhandling uh, that both nucleus and egg experience, um, and the and the reprogramming the nucleus undergoes from adult to embryonic status, often leads to animals that might look normal but have uh, aberrations on the molecular and cellular level. So, so there's there's a lot of um, th- there's a lot of like really precise technique that has to go into this. So this this thing isn't born. You know, like just born with liquid organs, you know, something just so like horrible like that. So um, now scientists have developed a new way to create genetically engineered domestic cats. So the outside of the cloning thing where they, they modify egg cells directly with viruses, the amount of genetic material they implant within the cats was tiny. If the entire string of DNA, this is so crazy. If the entire string of DNA that is the cat um, that is the cat genome were unraveled and depicted as a highway reaching across the United States from New York to LA. The inserted material would be equal in length to one of the little dashed yellow lines in the middle of the highway somewhere out in Nebraska. Whoa. That's is how, that that's, that's how like minuscule this fucking work is being done. Whoa. Now, Brian, does that blow your mind? Yeah. It's just, I wouldn't call it a clone. <laughs> You know, like I would just say, they because like that was cool. Like that's, that that, that cool. cool highway description, that was enough to, for me to go, hey, good work, scientists. I mean, but all to, all Brian yeah, ever needs you know? is a is a is a solid visualization mm-hmm. to yes. help him along. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know what? Yeah. It's it's purely the fact that I am a clone that I I just find it underwhelming. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. This efficient process, the first time sex cells of a carnivore have been genetically modified led to embryos that robustly expressed the implanted gene without all the complexities cloning can involve. So the result, three healthy kittens that glowed green when a blue light was shone on them and transmitted the gene to their offspring. Um, Wait, are you saying there was three clones? There are three kittens that were born this way, and all three of them glow in the dark. Because if it's a triple clone that sort of changes it for me there we go we got him we got him folks <laughs> yeah he's on uh the as research that comes in threes so the researchers took all this all this crazy catch it and then they applied this approach to investigating resistance to aids uh quote we want to see if we can protect the domestic cat against the aids virus and if we can protect any species eventually including our own against its own aids virus Um, The aim of future treatments is a gene therapy that can introduce protective genes into people that help them fight off HIV. So to do so, they created uh, transgenic cats that generated or expressed antiviral proteins taken from the rhesus monkeys. (laughs) And uh, Reese's appear- macaques. Uh, uh, such molecules can block retroviruses such as HIV and FIV. Pre- preliminary results suggested cells from these cats grown in the lab resisted replication of the feline AIDS virus, keeping them keeping it from spreading. And I you think know what's I interesting think the, here. I think the reason for that is because like rhesus monkeys are are there's so, there's some I, I think they're like immune to AIDS or something. Like there's like a a reason why they use those monkeys. I wonder what uh, what 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 is interesting to me on this is that this is about protecting uh, humans from AIDS. Eventually, using down the road, yeah, yeah. Ev- 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 eventually, using cri- yeah. using it sound. This sounds like they're using CRISPR to do this. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was what the guy in China, the doc in China is in jail for 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 yeah. well i mean there were some ethical violations which i think was I, I think not his, telling not I, telling people that he was I, doing this to their he, children that yeah, was I, th- a big I think his problem no, was no. he was he was going oh you guys are doing this with those cats fuck it i'll just do it with humans first without even looking into it but because he a, did it and he and he inserted he, he inserted did, yeah. some gene that that's right that uh makes it so that the people who have that gene aren't they can't get hiv like yeah. similar to how jr can't get cholera yeah, yeah but um but and those kids now glow in the dark <laughs> so wait wait but but so if this was you so theoretically this works let's say and they you know adapt it to be used in humans to 
prevent them from, from getting a- HIV. Mm. Um, is that, if it's genetically modifying them, isn't that not ethical? Like, is it, like how, what's the path to it, making that ethical? It's, well, I d- it's a difference between whether it's, uh, and I can't, it's, it's called germline right. or somatic. And one of them, I can't remember which is which, but one of them will, if you make a genetic change to somebody, one yeah. of them means that it, it will stay on. within you. And then and the other one means that if you have children, it will go to your children. Whereas yeah, the right. other one is that if you have children, it, that, that, yeah. that, that change won't get passed on. And we can't and do the that. Passing on yeah. that we, it's yeah. the passing on that's very, that's a, that's a, a hard a no, no. no across ethical. At least right now. E- everywhere. Mm. Right now, that's a hard no. That, that could change. Isn't it like really unlikely that that would change? Though? Uh, b- b- <laughs> hey, it was really unlikely that a uh, reality television television host was not going to become president of the United <laughs> States one day. Um, this is he, true. But he <laughs> did. Uh, and and boy, oh boy, boy, howdy, did that <laughs> fuck a bunch of shit up. So uh, really, boy, like we, we we honestly don't know. But as it stands right now, that's that's the hard no. You, and, th- you know, can I ask you guys a question? Um you have to I asked if I could ask you a question so you have to answer if it has to do with Trump I really don't want to go no there. it doesn't it okay yeah sweet, sweet. Okay. Um, if it, oh, it has to do with clones yes <laughs> Man, so we gotta get off this t- wait, wait. subject it's been 20 goddamn minutes <laughs> no it's fine we can stay on this all day because uh, I have a lot to say about clones as yeah, you guys I, I can <laughs> fucking tell dude <laughs> but wait do you guys think that someday a clone will be made that is an exact mirror of its original self and based on experience and emotions and like it, that it would respond almost exactly the same and contain all the same memories i'm gonna save you i'm gonna save you from asking me a question like that ever again in the future <laughs> i because do love speculating no no i do i do i do but but and i don't mean that like as in don't fucking ask me this shit again it sounded what, like you were saying no no, no 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 what i what i mean is that if you ever have to ask me a question that is like do you ever picture um you know, in the future, this type of thing happening. 100%. Yes. 100%. All the, well, that's pe- it, cause, cause I say it, no. It, it, well, yeah. no, 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 no. That's it. That, now here, here we go. On this particular, are you, are you saying no, because the human race won't last long enough? Because what I'm no. saying, what I'm saying is that if we do not hit an existential crisis within the next thousand years, w- yeah. I believe yes, it's possible. Like I don't know. Ev- I don't know. It's, anything is possible, dude. I don't anything. think that it will be impossible to do. I think that there's an ethical line that I that I I don't know if we'll ever cross. What about with a pig or that or will ever? Like that? I don't think that there's an. I don't think that there's a. I think there's an ethical line that we will that we won't cross as a as a species where where everyone agrees and accepts that this is the way that the, dude, the way yeah, we but do think things. about the history of the human race of the things that we used to that we used to just th- we like, used to watch we, people get in fights with a lion we used, and to, we used to pay to I go know. we used to I know, literally but we don't, line up to but we don't watch do people that be anymore. hanged in the fucking yeah. In, in like in the in the town square and like we're eating popcorn while someone was I just know what I'm saying is that burned to that, death. that's a I think that I think that's a, that that strengthens what what I'm saying whereas because I think that cloning somebody to the exact like you know down to the memory of you would be a step backwards in ethical framework so okay i get that but my point is that and we've we, only gone forward i think maybe no, no, not no, no, on no, a, no, maybe no. not on a different planet oh, we haven't only gone forward dude i mean you can't you fucking the, you get, the, a, you get a, an part. abortion in texas right now and you'll fucking go to jail like like what my, my, my whole point is that we there are so many people that exist that we honestly have no fucking clue how any kind of particular um, situation or experience could completely shift how, the way we think and the way that we act and the way that we go about our lives. Like it's, I think it's hard to to look at it now because you go, well, that I, it's, it's fucking impossible to think about how mm. we would ever revert to that. But dude, look at COVID. Look at the way that the world has reacted to COVID. If you had, if you had said in, in March of 2020 that we would be where we are now in terms of the way that like the world is so divisive based on this thing that we all could get and be really fucked up from. Mm -hmm. 
I would go, no, come on. There's no way. There's no way. Like we, it, we're all collectively, we would go through it together and we would all understand that. No, also, no, man. Like, I mean, I mean, I don't think we, I don't think we, I, I, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's ignorant to, to assume that we wouldn't go in a direction that you didn't think we could ever go into. I think that that's I don't fair. think that I don't I, I don't I, I I agree with you on I agree with you in that sense for probably most everything in that you could come up with except clone I I, 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 I have a I have a I have a hard I have a hard time with this one because because when like when we were talking about the somatic like we in this is a this is something that we've that I've, I've brought up a, a handful of times when we whenever we've got into the gene editing conversation <clears throat> which is the conversation, uh, which is the show called uh, Unnatural Selection. And one of the main themes on the show was uh, this guy, I think his name's Kevin something. He works at MIT and he's a, he's a geneticist. And he wanted to, he wanted to do something like fairly, fairly uh, obvious that, that, that only has benef- benefits really, at least that you can tell, that you can see, which was to, make a a a change to the genes i got to turn off my my shit here i'm getting a feedback um which was to turn off the gene in mice on Nan- on nantucket island i believe and if you if you put this mouse out into the uh out into the 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 the, the real world ecosystem in Nantucket, then that mouse would proliferate. And it is mainly mice that are on Nantucket that are making uh, Lyme disease spread throughout North America and especially in the, in the Northeast where, where it's, you know, out of control. And that was, that was shut down because it was, it was, it was deemed that making a genetic change that would forever alter a species in the actual ecosystem was was not so was not okay and and okay. and i hear you in in saying that you know a thousand years from now yeah uh, well let, yeah. well let, like okay if you play, to, to, if you play you know, that even, scenario even, out a thousand even, even a, without, a thousand times over a thousand years then even without maybe the we thousand years at some point even without the thousand years just hypothesize this day Let's imagine that Germany won World War II. Now, if you look at the scientific experiments for the greater good of humanity, according to the Nazis, if you look at what they were trying, what they, not what they were trying to do, what they actually fucking did to humans, which to them was ethically totally okay because fuck Jews. Now, if Germany won the war, well, I don't think it was necessarily ethically okay. I think that there was no, just no, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is to them, it would, to, that, to them, it made sense that it was ethically okay because Jews are lesser than, and we can do whatever the fuck we want to them That's to what they were saying. to advance to advance the the the, the you know science uh, according to the human race, to, according to the Nazis. That was their thought, their thought process. Let's say they won the war. Well. Science as we know it would be fucking completely dude, different right dude, now. You don't even have to go back in time. Think about Russia right now. If, say, Russia, <clears throat> you know, took over the entire world right now. And it'd be a really, it'd be a really weird, it would be a really that, weird place. I know that that's very unlikely I mean, and not it, possible, I, but no, I know. But at the same time, the beliefs that are held within society there and culturally are different than it would pour over. Certainly what we are yes. talking about yeah. here in, in so, the West. And, and so that's my point, Tay, is that like is is yes, if things continue the way that they go right now, ethically, those things probably will will never actually cross that line. But but we really it's it's so hard to tell how so many so many possibilities of experiences could literally shift the landscape of the worldview of every single human on the planet you and, guys are- and i i i i don't think it's that crazy to think that there will be a time and not even like not even something so sinister as like oh the nazis won and and now we're all like under this regime that that believe in you know eugenics and all this fucked up shit but but even something like you know again looking at covid like some sort of some sort of like existential event that almost wipes out the entire planet 
what kind of impact does that have on science in terms of like extending the life of humans you know um and again this is all so speculative and fucking hi- hypothetical but like like let's just say that uh you know a huge a huge fucking a, a, a comet hits the earth wipes out a bunch of people but we're at a point where we're going all right well we got to get off this planet some of us have to stay but some of us have to go and you have the opportunity to clone yourself to be a part of the you know that clone can be a part of the new fucking world order uh, yeah the new world order that's going to go and and be a sure. part of you the know, world economic like, form. <clears throat> yeah, all the there's. I mean, <laughs> you, you know, you, five hundred years from now, like there's, it's so wait, crazy wait, wait, wait. to think that in, in 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 the atmosphere, in the in the circumstance of an emergency, I think I think everything goes out the window. But in yeah. the absence of a of a global disaster emergency situation that is, you know, several hundred times greater than the, than what we went through in the last two years. And my point is that those those emergencies, I mean. We are we are staring down the barrel of of fifty of them that could that could Brian's, pop off at any fucking time. Guys, Brian's got his hand raised. I just want Brian's to say, ADD ADHD is kicking in and he can't I'm, just I'm, listen for a second. I'm and listening. Needs to fucking, I'm, I'm listening. <laughs> just needs to jump in. I'm listening and I'm waiting patiently to talk. And if you think that I need to jump in, you guys should hear yourselves talk on this podcast. <laughs> so all I want to say and get the final last word on this after ten minutes of not talking. <laughs> is I just want to say, to bring this full circle, you guys have missed the entire point of my initial question about cloning because cloning doesn't necessarily alter the gene pool. It just duplicates something that's already happening. So I think ethically, it's totally fine to clone people. And I don't think that 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 is germline or somatic or whichever one is the bad one. Um, I don't think that has any effect on that. So I think cloning is totally cool. Eventually it will happen. I thought That's you were going to find a. I thought you were going to find a way to bring this back to to <laughs> to the prevalence of dar- of of black lights at gay nightclubs. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying really hard, but it was one step too far removed. I mean, if you wanted to cut that out, we at this point we've referred to it so much. There's no way you can cut no, it. No, no, I, I don't want to cut it out because fucked. I think You're I think fucked. it's it's. Uh, I, never mind. I don't, I don't have to fucking explain myself to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, listen. Do you guys have you guys seen this picture before? Look at this sweet little thing. Oh my god, is like, that my yeah. kid, dude? That's is it, wait, I, is that an I, is that an oh, IUD? I hope. Oh, yeah, no. yeah, he saw it. Oh my god, yeah, dude, you saw it. So listen, folks, we're looking at a photo of an infant uh, that has just come out of uh, the body of another human, and uh, you can tell because it's like it's really red and like it's just <laughs> newborn as shit. <laughs> You can tell just by the way that it is. Uh, and, and in this newborn's hands is is literally it is clasping an IUD. Now this was uh, this came up in our Patreon hangout last night with uh, with our with our patrons over Zoom. Uh, we were hanging out. We were talking about IUDs for a bit, and then somebody sent me this link, and I did I didn't know about this. This happened a little while ago. This is a photo of a baby holding a uh, Marina IUD. It was super viral. Here's a little closer image you Man. can see there. In the hands, holding the fucking IUD in his little little baby hands. You know what? So this is this is a PSA for the fact that IUDs don't, don't always work. prevent pregnancy. <laughs> well, yeah, well, 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 typically they do. Not that they don't work. It, yes, they yeah. do work. They do work. But that's they, why I said they, don't. Yeah, always. yeah. They, they only work if they're um, if they if they're if they're properly uh, fixated it where they should be. <laughs> that uh, baby just fucking clearly took it right out. And he said, "Not, not, not today, not mommy." Today. <laughs> yeah. So, so this uh, this image went super viral on Facebook a couple of years ago, and it shows a one week old. Um, one week old Dexter Benjamin Manuel Tyler holding his mother's IUD in his hand minutes after giving birth. So the the 34 year old resident of Fort Mitchell, uh, Alabama, uh, gave birth to her little boy on April 27th uh, via scheduled C section. Uh, he's now dubbed the Marina Baby, uh, the brand name of the IUD. Uh, Hellion said she first got the form of birth control during the summer of 2016. So for people who aren't aware. An IUD is a form of birth control. It's a thing that is a little like like application that is literally inserted up into. I believe it like it like it rests like it goes through the cervix. Perhaps. It goes way up there. It goes way up in there. I'm fucking ding let me dong. give it. A, let me like, uh, I don't give know, it a but, but I'm pretty sure it goes. It, it, it like it basically goes through the cervix and then it looks like a little T. 
and the T would like basically be kind of like a butt plug. Like the T part would be preventing it from slipping all the way in. And it's a form of birth control. So like, you know, when, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know, I'm sure that they, this is probably what they say, but like when Bridie got her IUD before I thought that I was, or before I knew that I was sterile, we were having sex without a condom. We were, it was, it was just the two of us having sex together. So it was like, all right, we're, we, you know, we feel confident that like STIs are not a, pro, a part of our, our world right now. So the only thing is we don't want to get pregnant, but you have an IUD. So we had unprotected sex. Um, <clears throat> and I guess that they, they have IUDs that last, I think the Morena one has like hormones that expel, like seep out of it for five years that uh, that can like the, the same kind of hormones that you get from like a birth. Oh control yeah, pill. Did, did I'm, uh, I'm looking like at I'm looking at it here. It goes. It, it, oh yeah, it goes. It sits uh, way up there. Yeah, it's like it's basically like sits like through the cervix and then in the uterus and then the two arms on the side, like the fish hook sort of looking things. Um, they it almost looks like they're in this one image. They're like blocking the fallopian tubes. Mm. Oh shit! Wow. So it goes way up. There. It's way up there. It's yeah. like okay, so it's he, like so right he, in your uterus. It's like taking here's, up your entire Whoa, and crazy. also the pointy end <coughs> isn't sticking down it's like sticking it's further sticking up. up yeah it's yeah. sticking up yeah the t is like closer to the vag- vaginal opening yeah okay so so oh but my not God. even that so close. many women are listening to this right now going you guys are fucking idiots yeah. i mean they yeah, thought that 100%. they were 35 when minutes you were when you were having but, sex but, with bridey with well the so IDs, this is the did thing you, did you I, not I, call it unprotected sex did you call it like like minimally protected sex just to make yourself feel like five percent better that there's like a little bit of protection. I just call it raw dogging. <laughs> um, but so, 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 so when, it, when so when, so wh- the reason why I thought it was at the service is because when I was raw dogging Bridie back then, um, <laughs> oh I was, I, there was one time we had sex and I was like, I was like, we finished and I was like, oh babe, I, I felt like, I felt like I was scraping my dick against like a, a, a oh. like, like a metal, like, like a metal, um, Whoa, cork, corkscrew no. and she was like no and I was like yeah and she was like uh, that could be my IUD and I was like Jesus Christ now I mean it makes a lot of sense because um, as we all know as the, you know the three of us know very well that like I I turned down a very lucrative career in pornography um, mm-hmm. that, so, I mean it was it was by our Jeff our agent saw me peeing at a urinal and was like dude I Have can you considered? get you. I can yeah. get you work. Uh, do you not realize what you're, what you've got, uh, hanging off of you there? It's it's freakish. And and I and I said no, no. I, I've I've got a podcast to focus on. Um. So so I thought maybe that was the reason was because of my um. Seventy three inch hog. Um. That uh, that might have been poking that IUD, but uh, <laughs> turns out the IUD, which which this is common, was out of place i don't know if it's common but this happens so i think this is what was happening with uh with this iud baby so the uh the marina baby this was actually this woman's third iud and the first two she said worked great but uh hellion first found out that she was pregnant in december of 2016 she said quote i was scared at first since i had a marina uh, from what I read online, the majority of IUD pregnancies are either not viable or end in miscarriage. I oh, assumed shit. I was only a few weeks along, eight weeks at the most. But she decided to go ahead with the pregnancy regardless. During the first ultrasound, doctors told her she was about 18 weeks pregnant. Do you guys think that uh, when when uh, people who use IUDs talk about them like there's they're like out at dinner and they're like talking about the type of iud that they use do you think like the marina is like sort of like a guy talking about his truck and like yeah it's got a hemi um no yes <laughs> no nope. you're you're no you're wrong jared definitely okay you're definitely right. right like it sounds like the like but, well the i do brand I, name well I, yeah, I, I, I get what you mean and well i mean that happened in the call last night like like one of the one of the people in the call was like oh yeah i had a marina and yeah and like and you could tell you could see all all the women's eyes sort of like sparkle at the idea like like dude, oh, wow, bro, you are you are you've got dude, the marina you are looking to get hated on this why movie. why would that why would that <laughs> that that was like the second that was like the third <laughs> worst thing 
The worst thing was your bit about your your seventy six inch hog is like the worst thing that was said on this podcast so far. Hey man, uh, well hey. I don't know about that. It, I'm, um, not, I'm, I'm not. Lying. Hey, I got a fun fact. I got a fun <laughs> I'm fact for you guys. Just telling, talking shit. <laughs> Wait, I got what? a fun what? fact for you guys. But, but actually, the brand name, the Marina. Don't you think that's? Uh, I mean, I think it's a I think it's a pretty common uh, IUD that's used because it, it the Marina one is the is one of the ones that um, like top notch that that like seeps out the hormones. So right, it's, like rolls, it's, it's, di- it's, different, it's different than the copper the copper IUD. The copper one right. sounds like the basic model. I think the, the copper one was like the, the, I think the copper one was the one I was stabbing because it was it felt like copper. Well, oh, that's because it was like the you know basic model. <laughs> I wasn't joking sure. about the stabbing thing. That I that actually no, happened. I know. It was, I know it was that, extraordinarily yeah. uncomfortable. I know that you're serious I've, about that. I've heard you say that. You guys, a fun fact that I want to share with you, which is something that Kyla told me the other day. This <laughs> this is, relates to this relates loosely to everything we're talking about. In pregnancy, a uterus grows up to a thousand times its normal size. No. What? No. <laughs> yeah. Is the baby inside the uterus? Yes. Yeah. Dude, how small wow. is the uterus before wow. before <laughs> be, like Yeah, wait, what? <laughs> it's very small. Like Dude. this big. No, no, no. It's but got to be smaller than that. That's a thousand. Think about it. Yeah. A newborn baby. Dude, it's got to be like you can't see a uterus. See, if it could grow if a, it's thousand a thousand times, volume, times it in would size, swallow volume. you from the inside. In volume. Out. In volume. Because it's a, it's a it's a measurement of volume, not like a measurement of like of not size, a measurement of, uh, of not a measurement size. of yeah 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 not a measurement of like height first height and width. But think of it, if oh, it was okay, a, if sorry. it was an That's inch, what I was thinking. if it was an inch in volume, like a cubic inch of volume or whatever, then that means that it would be a thousand cubic inches of volume. It's got to be really it, small. Right? How big is a uterus? Right? That makes sense. Right? I mean, it's, b- it's pretty much as big as that IUD is. I'm picturing it like coming outside no, of you and like literally going. Wrapping, eating your whole body from the outside in. Dude, I'm, I'm looking at. Dude, in. I'm looking. Dude, I'm looking. The internet is telling me that I'm right. Yeah, Health no, is uteruses me that I'm are. Right. Uh, they're not small. I mean, you well, know, they're not. I mean, they're not. They're not. Sorry, they're not minuscule. How does how how is it that how does that make sense? Th- how does that make sense? A thousand times its size. I want to see. I told you. It was, like, I there, told you it was going to blow your mind. It's like a real life. Su- like, but is how there does like like Taylor I, or like Brian said, how does that not swallow the person? I need an analogy. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, this is. Oh, I can't picture this. This is where an analogy. This is where an analogy really helps. And we did. Where did Kyla read this? On Goop or something? Dude, Come I'm, on. I'm. Dude, this is. I'm reading this on Healthline literally right now. The uterus normally fits into the pelvis. When you're pregnant, your growing baby will cause your uterus to increase in size. 1,000 times from the size of a clenched fist to a watermelon or larger by the time you deliver. But how does that make sense? Like, like, I, can you explain the volume thing to me? Like, because it's a measurement of it's a me, it's a yeah, it's just it's just the way um, it would be like. Uh, like if you filled the uterus, the, the fist size uterus with um, with milk. And then you extended it to the watermelon size and filled it with milk. The amount of milk in the watermelon-sized one is a thousand times the amount of milk that's in the fist-sized one. Right. Yes. Actually, that's it. Yes. <laughs> the fuck. So wait, but like a, fi- a fist, <laughs> a fist size of milk is like that's like three quarters of a cup. What's it's three quarters un- of a cup times a thousand? Figure. Three quarters I've... of a cup times a thousand is like seven hundred gallons, dude. <laughs> 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 There's no way. <laughs> There's no way. This doesn't. This is a lie. A, this is a fucking lie. It is a lie. mind-boggling. Why didn't figure. we ask Elizabeth Randall this the other day? I didn't. This is. Uh, we need a professional here to help. To See, help the me. only thing I'm getting for analogies is that yes, a dung <laughs> a dung beetle can lift a human because it's a thousand times heavier than the dung beetle. I that's, that's, a dung beetle can't lift me, <laughs> and I don't weigh can. that much. Apparently, can it says so on Helpline. Dude, Healthline <laughs> is Cora 2022. <laughs> Fuck out of here with Healthline. Uh, Might as well be reading an article from the Sun. I can't uh, find sp- any good analogy. Spe- <laughs> speaking of the Sun, um, I've got a uh, I've got an article here um, from the Sun. Actually, for real. Well, can you believe that an ant can lift five thousand times its body weight? I can because I've seen ants lifting like dead birds. Do you think that's a thousand, five thousand times its body weight? That would make sense to probably, me. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, makes sense. Probably, yeah, probably good. Yeah, for sure. Like, think about an ant. Yeah, an ant is uh, no heavier than a, a, a like a, a fleck of this carpet. You know, yeah. a bird, you know, 
two birds in the hand is one in the pan when they, you know what they say. <laughs> I'm really glad that uh, Taylor didn't say, do you guys want to guess how big in size a uterus grows? How many times <laughs> bigger grows? Because I would have been like 750,000 times bigger. Yeah, 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 and yeah, then you would have said right. thousand and we wouldn't even we have wouldn't, this conversation. We wouldn't even <laughs> have this conversation. Wouldn't have been yeah, this you're fun. right. <laughs> so anyway, uh, speaking of the sun, here's an article and this is real. <laughs> uh, this is for, <laughs> this is for this week's uh, uh, segment of what the hell? <laughs> um, this this story actually for real hurts me. This story I I had a hard time listening to the story uh, and reading the story. So a woman's UTI was actually just a glass tumbler that was lodged in her bladder for four years. <laughs> Wait, sorry. What was la- what was lodged? <laughs> so you know a woman what? thought she had a UTI. Okay, uh, she didn't. She had a glass tumbler. Oh, like yes. the glass that you would get a cup of water at at your like local diner. Lodged in her bladder for four years. You know what? How this honestly did that happen? Th- you well, just did what? We were been talking about with this because if you didn't say the thousand times uterus size thing, and then we went into this article, I, like now I'm underwhelmed because I don't think a glass tumbler is a thousand times the size of a uterus, dude. Let's just <laughs> okay. Look at this. This is the fucking image. Okay, that's disgusting. Wow. Look at that. Does wow. that not fucking change your mind, dude? Uh, yeah, that changes. That my is mind. a glass tumbler with so within a bladder stone. That's uh yeah that really the bladder fun. stone formed around the tumbler that changed my mind real quick real quick yeah that yeah, sobers made me you up fe- made me feel gross that gets you back to reality so this woman um uh who doctors just initially thought she had a UTI um they were wrong turned out she had a fucking glass stuck in her bladder for four years she was a forty five year old woman she came to the hospital complaining of uh, typical lower UTI symptoms such as leaking. But doctors were left stunned when scans revealed there was a glass inside her bladder. Well, I, uh, you know what? This is an image right here. What we're looking at is an image of the x-ray of the glass. It's a perfectly formed, like, it's not a pint glass, but it's like, it's like a quarter pint glass. It's like a, a small it, fat. It's what glass. you would drink uh, uh, an old fashioned from, you mm-hmm. know, like a, yeah. like, like it's just a, <clears throat> yes. just a typical kind of like diner like a rock tumbler. glass you know it's yes the crazy thing that is when you first um said this like i was like whoa that's cr- like that's pretty crazy and yeah. then when you showed the pictures i was like oh that makes, it makes me feel you, sick. It, makes it hurt yeah it hurts. but i didn't initially think how did she not know she knew okay no she knew <laughs> because that would make sense like i feel like she you knew would, she like, knew if you, she knew i mean i'm not saying like that that like I'm not knocking the fact that you might be playing around with that and doing the thing, but like I, it surprised me that like for four years you would leave it up there and go. No, ah, yeah. Well. yeah, she left it up there for four years. She knew. Um, it was in case. So the whole thing was encased, uh, by an eight centimeter wide bladder stone. Oh my god, which are normally so small they're hard to see with the naked eye. So this thing was eight three inches wide. Um. The woman from Tunisia revealed that she had used the drinking glass as a sex toy a number of years before. Evidently, she had she had inserted it. So she didn't even put this thing in her vagina. She shoved this into her urethra. Whoa. How? Dude, I can't even. How? How? How is that even even. possible? How I is can't it even, even possible to stick a tumbler into your urethra? Well, your, your dude, urethra I mean, can stretch to 2,000 times its size. <laughs> <laughs> dude, ob- <laughs> apparently. Cause we're, cause Actually, yeah. I'm thinking. I mean, yeah, Kyla's, staring, Kyla's staring down the barrel of a, of, a, of a catheter that needs to go in, well, A, oh, to, no, induce, no, to induce her no, pregnancy. No, no, oh, well, then, no, no, then, no. Yeah, and then B, also to have a catheter while, like, depending on how long the aye, labor aye, takes aye, that it aye, in aye, for aye. for urination so like aye, 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 aye. Th- like this guys, is this, like this guy this hurts me oh oh yeah oh oh here oh here here kyla's kyla's signaling me to, <laughs> she to wants give to you talk more. about it no, 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 kyla, no. She, she wants she wants me to give you more detail the, so here this is this is no. what this is this is what the induction looks like for kyla Ugh. so she will 
go in, they will put a catheter, and on the end of the catheter, they will have an an, an uninflated balloon. Well, that's how catheters that then, stay in. That's how they stay that, in. Then they will then they will blow they they will they will blow up the balloon. Yeah. And then the balloon will act like the head of the baby, putting pressure on the cervix <gasps> to open up. Whoa. Oh my God, cool. no. Oh, that's crazy. So the balloon thing, I mean, when it, when I had the catheter pulled out of my pee pee a long time ago, the yeah. the balloon the balloon was blown up up in there. And that's how it ca- that's how it stays in. So like like right. when like when you when you have a patient who's like um mentally unwell and they're catheterized, um Sometimes they'll like grab their catheter and pull it out and it's and it can really fuck your shit up. I bet because yeah. the balloon just tears up your insides. Mm-hmm. So you gotta have that balloon deflated before you have the catheter pulled out. But that's crazy. I didn't know I I I didn't know that they would use the catheter also to like stimulate preg uh pregnation. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, so, like so, that, so that's that's crazy. A, there's a um, so basically uh. like in in the in the latter stages of of pregnancy, the they they, they measure the baby's position relative to uh, the uterus or sorry to uh, the cervix by calling it uh, what station is the baby and the, and then the, and, and it goes by measuring it by minus one two three which is higher from the cervix and then and then right. plus one two three which basically three is the baby's head is on the cervix and, and, and the dilation is happening uh, and the baby, the baby coming is imminent. So <sighs> if you are coming to term and you, and the, the, the doctor is going, well, for whatever reason we want to, we, we want to induce this pregnancy and not have it go any longer. If the baby isn't at the station that is naturally producing um, like a starting labor, then the, the catheter with the balloon mm. sort of like simulates that the Jesus baby is lower Christ. and then starts to open up. It's the like, um, cervix. I don't like it's that. like, uh, imagine if the foot pedal <laughs> to, uh, the foot pedal to like a garbage can, you know, the garbage cans that like, you step on with yeah, your foot yeah, and it yeah. opens it up. Yeah. Imagine that foot pedal was on the inside and the baby's head naturally was pushing it to let itself out of the trap door. <laughs> yeah. You actually like shoving a balloon down in there, blowing it up so that it slowly like presses down on the foot pedal to pop the yeah. trap door open and yeah. let the we love slide we in. love a good analogy, Brian, and especially I feel like I, f- I feel like I feel like most people out there will love the um, the trash the baby analogy. Yeah, the correlation yeah. of the uterus and the vagina to a trash can. Yes, that's right. I wasn't saying yeah. that. I wasn't saying that they are like that. I was just you keep know, digging, dude. Yeah, I was keep just digging, going and finding a, like a, a totally thing that was just like totally random. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, um, it was a good right. analogy. Back to this uh, this article here. There's this is a part that maybe <laughs> makes me laugh it's really like a, hard. It's like a glow in the dark garbage can. Yeah? Um, uh, so so evidently this woman she shoved the glass up into her urethra, and uh, that's the hole from which people pee, and not the vagina. So so just to make that clear. Um, they said in the article, while the article, while the medical report does not mention it, the woman may have been practicing what's known as urethral sounding, which we're familiar with on the podcast. Mm-hmm. But then they go on to say this. They go on to say this very specifically, and it doesn't. It, I'm like, oh, that's not. That's not the way to say it. They go, the risky activity involves inserting a glass or object into the urethra to heighten sexual pleasure and arousal. Because <laughs> like, it's usually like as not a glass. It's, yeah, like, <laughs> but, yeah, it's yeah. usually. Anything but a glass. <laughs> like the fact that. But in this case, it was a glass. <laughs> uh, doctors have had reports of people deliberately, deliberately like, placing things up there, either due to mental health problems or for pleasure. That's like if this was like <laughs> like somebody like entered a horse that's race. The article, not me. If they were like somebody entered a horse race and they were riding on the back of a dog and they were like horse races are usually ridden on the backs of dogs and oh, and boy. not horses like it just doesn't make any sense no uh the report <laughs> noted the motivations most frequently associated with right. the presence of foreign bodies with in the bladder are of a sexual or erotic nature uh, various objects have been inserted into the bladder and many patients fail to remove them themselves and are very embarrassed to seek medical help uh which is the origin of a clinical picture which is most often atypical which occurs in a patient particular terrain the patient arrived at the emergency department at uh, Academic ho- Hospital Habib Bergubia, 
uh, com compl uh, complaining of UTI symptoms. She reported that she had suffered cystitis, inflammation of the bladder, several times, but it had never been investigated. God damn, dude. The woman didn't have any blood in her urine, nor was she suffering any urinary incontinence. So, like, she was doing all right. Like, she was... Dude, this thing is in... A fucking tumbler is in your bladder for four years, mm -hmm. and she's, like, you know, not dying. Living. Like, she's she's living. Uh, but she, she did have a higher than normal red blood cell range, indicating that the body was fighting off some sort of infection. Uh, bladder stones, which are usually really tiny, develop from hard masses of mineral that grow when the urine is not properly emptied from the bladder. Well, this bladder stone was a bladder boulder, and it was forming over the, the, the span of four years. Was that the article, or was that you? That's me. <laughs> um, in this case, doctors performed a surgery to remove the bladder boulder. Uh, then they cracked it open. Can you imagine? Can you imagine these doctors kind of like on like on the set of Jurassic Park? They just pull out a dinosaur egg. They crack it open and they find a little fucking prehistoric tumbler glass popping out of this goddamn egg that came out of this woman's bladder. No. And because I saw a picture of it. Like, what do you I think their like faces were, dude? What do you think the doc? Like, how shocked would you be? I, man, I mean, uh, you know, like, would you, from, what, like, wouldn't, wouldn't from you some just... of the stories that we've heard from docs, I feel like they're just kind of going, wow, man, no, I feel like they I... just go, wow, wait, 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 I, wait, wait, I feel, wait, 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 I feel like, look, uh, like, a, like a, 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 the, the, the leg of a table, you know, that you go, uh, like, I, and, and this is up someone's ass. You go, okay, yeah, I get it, but dude, a tumbler glass inside of a bladder, like, like I would that look short at fat. I would look at I would right. look at yeah, that exa this, exactly man I'd be looking at that the same way I look at a David Blaine magic trick where I go I have no idea how he did it <laughs> and then when you find out how he did it you go you really well did fuck it. yeah that makes a lot of sense <laughs> and that's how that would work but yeah. fuck I did not see that like <laughs> there's just like there's just it not couldn't enough, have been that easy like if you had to like look at a bunch of in objects this world. if if you had to look at a bunch of objects that look sort of like phallic. You'd think the tumbler glass would be like the last thing you would consider doing that with. But dude, it doesn't even it, uh, phallic doesn't even matter. We're talking about the urethra, right? We're talking like, about we're talking about yeah, right. We're talking about a hole that doesn't that isn't meant to take what? anything at all. What is I mean? You talking even, about the urethra? Like like <laughs> when some when someone when someone sounds with like a chopstick? Okay, I get it. I get that. Not the vagina. Not well, the it vagina. Matter, sounding, it, it doesn't sounding. matter. It doesn't matter. Sounding yeah. anything. It, the sounding urethra? anything it, like you a chopstick or a, a, like a, a metal fucking dowel or like whatever that I go okay yeah I get it like that but dude a tumbler like I'm holding a, a single can of beer right now the width of this can of beer is the same width as a tumbler mm. probably mm. not mm -hmm. probably and like, not like even. <laughs> I can't mm. even uh, I literally it f physics it's physics put, dude you could put that in your butt, though. I could easily yeah, put that in my butt. My butt stretches. I, my my piss my piss hole. I mean, does it stretch like that? Two thousand times bigger. I mean, if, if, the uter if, the, if the uterus, if the uterus, totally guys, I don't if know. if the uterus is any indication, I mean, I, mean, I guess the human body, the human stretching. body is all capable over. of incredible yeah. things. Fucking hell, man. Anyway, she's. Um, She's alive. Wow. She okay? Yeah, that's really she that's really the star of the story. I mean, I don't know if she's o I wouldn't say she's okay. Is, can really? anyone be okay after that? I don't know. Probably feels right. better. She probably feels a bit better. Yeah, I don't know. You know when you're yeah, really yeah, yeah. Gassy? two days two day two two days later the woman had recovered and was well enough to go home. <laughs> Only to shove a fucking uh, a growler up her fucking <laughs> this hole. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, God she was like, damn it, man. She she went, she just went home and went. That was child's play. I got so much play. more space up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was child's play. Oh, we need to man, up, we need to up like, the ante. I d like you know I don't yeah I don't want to king shame like that like if <laughs> if you're into putting stuff up your urethra. By all means, do it. But like, you know what? Dude, I think I'm okay I, I with kink like, don't shaming do, don't when it do. goes to the level of like, I'm fine you're, with kink shaming when it's no, like you're just doing no, shit no, that's no. gonna Taylor, hurt no, yourself. You no, 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 you no, 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 no. It's just no. like it's like look, like okay, I get it, I get it. You want something up your urethra, okay? If you want something real thick up your urethra, dude, there's things you can buy that come with like, like, 
built in econo- er- ergonomics yeah. of the thing that prevents it from getting lost up there. That's why yeah. that's why butt plugs have a fucking base. That's what I'm saying. You know, like yeah. that's like, what I'm saying. Don't I'm saying, take I'm a saying, glass I'm saying, and, I'm and it, shove it up there. Once it goes past <clears throat> the once it goes to the this could hurt me slash kill me level but, but, no, 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 like, no, no, but then no, you're getting like, into paraphilia like it could be no, like no. it could be mental illness it could, no, no. it could be a mental thing no what taylor's like, trying to say is that he is okay with king shaming when his tax dollars are affected <laughs> <laughs> like when somebody right ends right. up in the hospital <laughs> right and it's fucking taylor's dime <laughs> yes. guys, that's paying for guys. It, then he's thank pissed. you thank oh. you for thank you for explaining <laughs> that in a way that i obviously couldn't <laughs> At first, I, 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 that's perfectly that perfectly <laughs> illustrates you know, my sentiment. You know what's really funny is I, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be c- quite honest right now. I think <laughs> it's that the balance sheet. <laughs> I think I'm that not okay with it. I think that if you were to stack this episode <laughs> up with the catalog of episodes that we put out, it's the over worst the f- one. Six years, <laughs> this might be one of the worst ones we've ever done. Yeah, and for sure. and and what's really funny is. My interview on White Coat Black Art is coming out tomorrow, oh, yeah, and we're really gonna funny. get it. I think we're gonna get a big, big influx of people. A people that are gonna be pissed because I said some shit that I don't think people are gonna be okay with hearing, and so we're gonna get have the haters coming already. But then those haters stumbling onto this episode is the first episode that they listen to. <laughs> You know what my thought is? You know, like, have, you know what I say? You know what I say? We're going to have a hard You're week welcome. next week. Hey, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jared, Jared, at least week. after they listen, they won't be mad at you. They'll be mad at me. But uh, the, <laughs> the funny thing is, like, yeah. this this version, the last hour version of myself is the version of me I don't like much. It's <laughs> <laughs> my least favorite version of myself. Holy and here shit. it is. You know, uh, you have 600 conversations. Well, that happen. It folks, out. with that yeah. said, uh, we have some, we do, ha- we actually do have some really incredible episodes coming up. And, uh, and I want to I want to plug one episode. We, we so we because Taylor was about to have this baby, or it, or you know by this time we're recording this is released. He might even have it, even though it's actually going to wait until Saturday. Apparently, um, uh, we in preparation for this, we've we've actually recorded enough episodes to get us through, at least for Monday episodes to get us through to the end of June. So we have a big catalog, back catalog of of shows that were. Excited to get to you because we've got a lot of really great ones. But we just recorded today, um, which is the same week that this is coming out, this episode. Uh, we just recorded an episode that's, that we're going to put out on Monday um, with a young man named Brad who has Huntington's disease. And um, the reason we're putting it out is because there's a big fundraiser happening for Brad and for his family. And we are so, so excited for this fundraiser because it's doing really well and we want to see it like get to the end. Um, Brad's Huntington's has progressed quite uh, drastically over the last four years. And um, obviously with a prognosis like that, it's it's not uh, it's not a great future. Um, You know, things are things are likely going to go downhill continuously and progress quicker and quicker. And so. Uh, this fundraiser that's being put on by our friend Katie Mahoney is uh, is looking to send Brad and his family over to Europe, and we're so happy to um, to have had Brad and his mother Peggy on the show. It's coming out Monday, and I really like it's such a genuine, sweet, beautiful episode. We hope you tune in to listen to it, and uh, we also hope that you 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 um, contribute to to the fundraiser that Katie's putting on because it is a really special thing. And we feel really grateful to have had that conversation with Brad. So we don't typically like give you heads up for episodes coming out, but we recorded it today. We want to get it as soon as possible because the timing of it all is just like uh, paramount. And so we are uh, we're really excited, looking forward to that. Having said all that, thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Uh, <laughs> we hope you all five of you that made it. This yeah, we far. hope you tried. Um, but we will be back uh, as always Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. If you want to catch these Friday episodes, they are on YouTube. You can watch the silliness take uh, take place before your very eyes. Um, hit subscribe there, and of course, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think about how uh, how much Brian's a piece of shit. And uh, and if you're listening to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, leave a rating and a review on Spotify. You can leave a little rating, which would be really sweet. You can do that on your mobile app. And uh, for everybody else uh, that's been contrib- contributing to the podcast through our Patreon, we we thank you so much because uh, it wouldn't be the same without you. And uh, I, the 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 uterus to a thousand to a thousand times its size. I mean, if you if you know otherwise, 
let us know. I mean, we, you know, we talked to a lot of professionals yeah. that would, that would know the answer to that, but we don't have access to them at all times. So, uh, let us know if you have any additional information on that. Cause that is fascinating. I remember Kyla saying that to me the other day and I had the exact same reaction that you guys had. I went, what the fuck are you talking about? That, that doesn't make any sense. But now, you know, all the interwebs say it. So if the interwebs is wrong, let us know. Letters at sickboypodcast.com. And if you want to be a guest on the show, go to sickboypodcast.com slash contact and fill out the form. And uh, if you guys feel like uh, I'm outnumbered here by Taylor and Jerry and you want to join the post episode conversation over on Discord, you can join us there and give me some backup so that I, I don't feel as bad. Um, I don't know how much backup you're going to have after yeah, backup after this. the shit you said, dude. Backup. You're going to get I some. I need backup. Uh, but thank you so much to the people who make the show happen. The sweet potatoes over on Patreon. Uh, Jeff Lonis, our manager. Richard Coin for the theme music. We love you guys. That is it for this week. I'm Brian. I'm Taylor. And I'm Jeremy. And this is Sick Boy. <laughs>